Okay, the structure of complexes. So, so form a complex from its Lewis acid and Lewis bases. So, uh, I guess I could have put two in here, but yeah, I guess we can still do that. So chromium ion, that's our Lewis acid. We talked about that long, a long, long time ago, saying that there are, there are Lewis acids, or things that are considered acids by the Lewis definition that aren't acids at all as far as the other two definitions. But we say if it uh, accepts a lone pair, then it's a Lewis acid. A Lewis base donates it, and we call these uh, ligands or ligands. I learned it as ligands. I hadn't heard the term ligand uh, until much later. Uh, it's uh, when I took biochemistry, so I'll often call them ligands. Now this lone pair is uh, attached to the chromium, and if there are two of them, then we put that here. You could put it like that. And that doesn't change the charge because these are neutral. A lot of the ligands are neutral. So some of them are charged, but they're generally going to be negative because they have to attach to something that's positive. So we should know how what's happening here. This is a coordinate covalent bond. Now, um, once we and we've created what's called a complex ion. If it we then took that, and so we'll just reduce it down in size here, and we added on um, three chlorines to balance it out. This would be this is a, co a complex ion, or a coordinate complex ion, uh, and this this is called a coordination compound because it's no longer an ion. So this is a coordination compound. We should just know a lot. Of, there's a lot of terms here. Okay, so determine the coordination number for each of the following. Well, the coordination number is how many lone pairs are attached to the center here. Each ammonia has two, has one lone pair that can attach. So since there's six, the CN for this guy is six, and that's it. There's a, it can get a little dicey. Uh, when we talk about uh, bidentate uh, and polydentate ligands, but we'll get to that. Uh, silver, water here. Water has two lone pairs, but only one can attach at a time because they're on the same atom. So there's two, so the coordination number here is two. There's four ligands here. The chlorine, or the chloride, has four lone pairs, but only one can bond at a time, so the coordination number is four. Uh, now, if we did this, so that's minus 2 plus 2, so this would be, this would still be minus 2. This would have a coordination number of 4 because the ox, this uh, oxalate ion can attach in two, uh, two places. This is a little bit of ahead of where we are. Uh, in the chapter, but just to point it out, that you don't just count up the ligands, you have to know how many times that they can bond. Well, the oxalate ion is very large, and it can, uh, actually this is, so we have that, um, oh, ah, dang it, <laughs> I don't know why I put that double bond in there, there it is, it's a horrible mess, but uh, don't have to worry about it. The thing is it can bond in two places and it's large enough to, to do that. So since there's two of them and they bond twice, the coordination number is four. Okay, determine the oxidation state for the metal ion in each of the following. So the oxidation state, we just have to figure out what the charge is on this each of these central atoms. The cyanide, so this is gonna be important to know the charges on the ligands. If you're studying this for the first time, then you don't know them. Or you might know some of them, but you're gonna to have to know them all. There's really not that many. It's the, most of them are minus one. There are some that are zero, and there's a, a few that are minus two. And that's about it. So cyanide is minus one. There's a seven here, so that's minus seven. It's a minus three total, so this should be plus four. That's the oxidation state on the molybdenum. CO is just carbon monoxide, so it's zero, which means that since this whole thing is zero, then the oxidation number for iron must be zero, and it can be. It's, it's going to be either positive and it can be zero. It's never going to be negative, not, not for this kind of structure. Iodine is minus one. There's three of them, so that's a minus three total. So minus three total, and then so the mercury must be plus two. So pretty easy. It's just like we, we did back in chapter two, uh, finding the charges on some of these ionic compounds. 
Now it says give examples of monodentate, bidentate, polydentate. Monodentate, and that's one tooth, that means it bites once or it uh, reacts or it bonds once to the central atom. And here I've, I've drawn out all of them that were in the, the chapter. And I've given their names too. This is bromine or bromide, we call it bromo when it's part of one of these transition metals, or one of these complexes, I should say. Chloro, chloro I, iodo, fluoro. Then this is the cyanide ion, but we call it cyano. This is the hydroxy ion, or, um, but we call it hydroxo. This is the oxide, we call it oxo. So by putting the O on the end here, it indicates that it's a ligand. That's why we call it something different, because it's reacting, it's, it's doing something different than it does in, uh, if we have this, this is sodium hydroxide, but if OH is part of a complex ion, then it would be hydroxo, just to indicate the difference. So this is the, and then we have, uh, these are very different. This is ammonia, we call it amine. That's not too different, but this is carbon monoxide. We call it carbonyl or carbonyl. Uh, H2O is aqua. Sulfate is sulfato. Uh, carbonate is carbonato. So it sounds sometimes like we're making stuff up. But that's, that's how we, what we call it, so they all have that ending of O. And then bidentate, I already showed the one, uh, oxalate ion, we call oxalato. And then we have ethylene diamine, which is, uh, has two, just like the um, oxalate ion, this oxalato had two oxygens that can bond. This has two nitrogens that can bond, and it, and it has two car carbons in the center, making it a, a kind of a flexible molecule. So we, instead of drawing out this whole molecule, we usually just do this. We just show the two ends and a line, and we know by seeing that curving line that it's the rest of that molecule. So we leave off the carbons and the hydrogens just to make it easy to look at. So this is one is called ethylene diamine. Notice there's one M here, two M's here so that we can distinguish when we look at it that we don't think it's two, two of these amines attached. Then here's one of the polydentate. There's lots of these, but this is a very, very common one, EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetate ion. And you can see that there's uh, the nitrogen here, one, two, then this oxygen, this one, this one, and this one. So there's six places that this can, can form um, a bond. So this EDTA actually wraps around metal ions and when it does that, it's called a chelate. So this is a chelating uh, ion. And uh, when it has, once it's wrapped itself around a, a, an ion, it completely uh, neutralizes that effect that that metal ion can have. It might have some other effect, but it, it can no longer, as part of the, this complex, but it can no longer do what it, was, uh, it, it would want to do because it's been complex. So this is a way of getting rid of these heavy metals out of solutions by using EDTA.